Hey guys, welcome to the Dev Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to implement UI Pan Gesture Recognizer for dragging views inside of your iOS applications and apps, right? So dragging UI views with UI Pan Gesture Recognizer. Here's a clip from the middle of the video to get you an idea of what we're doing. And now we move it, it will only move on the x-axis, okay? So now what we need to do is modify the y one by saying translation dot y. And it's pretty clear what's gonna happen here. It's gonna move on the y-axis as well. All right. You'll see it snaps back and basically we're going to be using auto layout constraints to put it on the screen initially uh, with an image view and a normal view with a color with some opacity and then we are going to dive into the ui pan gesture recognizer part of it right so let's go ahead and get started by creating a new xcode project and you'll also see that i have an image so make sure you have an image that you're going to use unless you don't want to use an image you really don't have to and then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to call this pan gesture. I'm going to hit next and then I'm going to hit create. Okay. My computer's so slow. So buy my courses so I can get a new computer for once. Just kidding. That's no, that's messed up. I don't mean that. All right. So basically what we need to do is go into view controller swift and get rid of this comment. And then we just need to throw an image view on the screen. Okay. So I'm going to grab an image here. And from my downloads, BG, it looks like assets, throw that image inside of your project. And then now that you have an image in there, let's go ahead and throw one on the screen with some auto layout constraints. So I'm first just going to declare a file private variable up here or constant. I'll say file private, let image view is equal to UI image view, image, UI image named BG. That should work. And then I'm just gonna throw that on the screen and add some constraints to kind of constrain it on the screen, okay? So let's go ahead and just say view.add sub view, image view. I don't even have autocomplete, that's how slow my computer is. And then we're gonna say image view.translates auto resizing mask into constraints is equal to false. And then we'll say image view top anchor. Sorry, we'll say we'll center it. So we'll say image view, and I'm gonna use programmatic auto layout for this. And uh, I'm gonna go fast through it so we can get to the UI pan gesture recognizer part of this video because I'm sure that's what 90% of you have come here for and not to learn programmatic auto layout. So I'll hustle through this and then we'll talk more in depth about UI pan gesture recognizer near the end of the video. So we'll say image view.center y anchor dot constraint and we'll just set it to view dot center y anchor. And then we'll activate it. And then we'll copy that and we will simply say center X anchor. And if you're not familiar with programmatic auto layout, this line right here just allows us to do it, okay? And make sure you add the sub view before writing this code. All right, now we just need to give it a width and height. So we'll say image view .height anchor. Constraint is equal to constant and I'll say 450. And then activate that. It's important that you activate it. And then we'll copy this and we'll say width anchor. And then we will say equal to constant 275. And then we'll recompile our application and see if it loads. It might not even load for a while. So I might have to cut the video if it doesn't compile quick enough because of my slow computer. But uh, let me just resize this so that I can fit my face down there. All right, I guess I'm gonna cut it until it builds, okay? Okay, so it's on the screen now. Let's go ahead and let's fix the the uh, aspect mode or content mode by saying image view dot content mode is equal to dot scale aspect fill. And we recompile that and it'll look good, okay? So while that's compiling, let's go ahead and throw the, Im the uh, background image on the screen so that it looks good. So all we have to do really is create a UI view and give it a background color blue. So we'll say let card is equal to UI view. And then we'll say, we'll basically copy all of this and put it on there, okay? We want it to be the same constraints. So we're just gonna copy that and put it right there and then just say card, 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 card. And then we finally below card here, what we wanna do, and you have to do it before your constraints. So what you wanna do is on line 27 here, say image view dot add sub view card, okay? And then now what we wanna do is give it a background color blue. So we'll say card dot background color. And again, I'm going fast through this so that we can basically get to the UI pan gesture recognizer and talk about that in depth, okay? And if this is, uh, if you came here to learn auto layout constraints for whatever reason, go, just go like watch some of my courses or my videos on the channel because I have videos explaining this stuff more in depth. I just really want to make this video focused on UI pan gesture recognizer, okay? 
I just want to make that very clear. Okay, so now let's compile it. And basically what's going to happen is we're not really going to see, or we're going to see that this image view kind of extends too far, but we can fix that by applying clips to bounds set to true on the image view and then giving it a corner radius as well to get that nice corner radius, all right? All right, see, it's, all, it's kind of like busted. So what we need to do is simply say image view dot content mode, sorry, image view dot clips to bounds it's equal to true. And if you don't know what clips to bounds is, basically it's just going to clip whatever, I'll read the description here. It says a Boolean value that determines whether the sub views are confined to the bounds of the view, okay? Now that's, you might think, okay, but the image view is not a sub view, it's the main view, right? But the image part of it is actually uh, technically a sub view. So we're gonna clip it to the width of our image view, okay? And then now we'll say image view dot layer dot corner radius is equal to something like 38 to closely match the uh, the iPhone X kind of curve. Dang, my back hurts, I have a herniated disc. Mm. I got two herniated discs. All right, probably from sitting too much. Uh, all right, so now we have that on the screen and it looks great, right? Now we just need to add the pan gesture recognizer, okay? So this is where I will start coding the pan gesture recognizer. Go ahead and copy that in if you skipped to this part. And then now what we'll do is we'll simply say image view and we'll say add gesture recognizer, UI pan gesture recognizer. And then we're going to say target is self and action is selector self dot handle pan gesture, okay? now. We have to provide this function. So let's go ahead and go below our view to load here. And let's say add objective C funk and we'll say handle pan gesture. And then we're taking in a gesture variable that's gonna be of type UI pan gesture recognizer because that's how targets work. If we add it, if this was a button or like if this, yeah, if it was a button, we could say button, right? But we wanna take in a UI pan gesture recognizer, okay? And then there's a few options on here, okay? You have if, and you can say gesture.state is equal to dot changed else if gesture dot state is equal to and uh the second one is ended and then there's another one which is began okay so we should put that at the top so i'll say else if right here and then just to kind of give it a more logical flow we'll say if gesture dot state is equal to began there we go okay so those are our three options here now you can go ahead and print in here began and then you can print in here changed and then you can print it in here ended okay now because my computer is so dang slow i'm not going to kind of test these all i'll try it right now but if it lags at all i'm not going to do it because my computer's so slow but basically what's going to happen is when you move the view with your finger initially it will say began and then every time you make the slightest movement with your finger it's going to say change so that's when it's moving around okay and then ended is very clear it's just when it ends now this might not work initially right okay so we, it's not working that's what i expected because we need to set our card is user interaction enabled set to false and that's part of the reason i actually included the blue card you might have been wondering why i did that and a big reason is because you're not going to be able to drag it if user interaction enabled is set to true. But the thing is, at the same time, it's not going to let you do it unless you set image view is user interaction enabled set to true, okay? So you'll see even now it shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't let us do it. But then when we say image view dot is user interaction enabled is equal to true, it's going to work, okay? And then you're gonna see that when we move it, it begins. And then when we continue moving it, it'll just print changed a lot. And then we hit end, it will end a lot, okay? Now, this is great, but it's not really gonna move our view at all yet, okay? But it's super, super easy to do this actually. Like it's surprisingly easy, okay? You'll see now in the console that it's saying, notice right when I tap it, it's gonna say began. And then it says changed a lot. And then I let go and it says ended, okay? So what you wanna do, or what we're gonna do, is we're gonna mess with changed and ended. Because you'll see in the completed app, I would move it and it would move around. And then when I let go, it would go back to the original state, okay? So I'll show you how to do both of those really easily. So we'll say let translation is equal to gesture.translation. 
and we're going to say what view the translation of the pan gesture in the coordinate system of the specified view so it's pretty obvious that what that means is we're maybe it's not obvious but we're going to drag it wants to know what view we're dragging it in and that's the main view right so we're just going to say view all right we could say self.view to make that more clear now what we can do is we can modify our image view transform so we'll say image view transform is equal to cg affine and if you've never messed with these go ahead and search my channel for a video on cg affine transform and we're just going to choose scale x and y and what we can do is we can actually put translation dot x and then for y i'll just say zero for now okay just so you really understand what's going on here we're going to put translation dot y in there in a second and if you want to skip to that, you can do that right now, but I'm just going to show you with translation X to help you really understand what we're doing here when we're changed. Okay. So remember that when we're dragging it changed is continuously running. Okay. So if I move it now, mm, it disappeared. That didn't, that wasn't supposed to happen, but all right, we're just, okay. It's cause I did scale. Okay. I'm an idiot. I want to do translation X. Okay. Now let's compile it and I will show you what it does, okay? All right, so it's compiled. And then now when you move it, it will only move on the X axis, okay? So now what we need to do is modify the Y one by saying translation dot Y. And it's pretty clear what's gonna happen here. It's gonna move on the Y axis as well. Now you might have noticed when I was moving it there on the X axis, it kind of just stopped wherever I moved it, which might be the functionality you're looking for. However, you can make it go back to the center pretty easily when it ends. Okay. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's try both now. And it moves wherever we move it really, which is really kind of cool. You'll notice it starts kind of in the middle though, whenever you move your finger off it. Right? So, you can try and figure that one out if you want, but I'm going to show you how to have it go back to the center. And that's really easy. Let's first just set a animation. So we'll say UI view dot spring. And then if that ever loads, we'll hit return and then we'll get that spring animation. I'm going to say with duration one delay zero spring with damping 0.2. So it's going to be pretty bouncy and initial spring velocity one, the options curve ease in or whatever you want to do animations. And then let's get rid of the completion there. And then in here, we'll just say image view dot transform is equal to dot identity. Okay. So whenever you set dot identity on the transform object, it's base dot identity. Okay. Whenever you set transform on, oh my gosh. Okay. It's cause we need to mark image view self. Whenever you mark Whenever you set transform on a UI view object to dot identity, it will basically reset it to its initial value. Okay. So that's what we're doing there. And then we're just animating it by wrapping that animation around it. And that's, what's going to cause it to animate back, which is pretty sick. All right. So let me just show you that one more time. I'm going to drag it. Bam. Super sick. Obviously that's not like a sick animation. Like it's just like way too slow, but you can mess around with these values. Like you could say with duration point zero point four or something, and it's going to go faster. You can put the spring with damping up to like one, and then it won't be like bouncy at all, like stretchy kind of bouncy at all. Um, but if you set the duration to point four, it's going to kind of make it just bounce really quick. Right. All right. So I'm going to drag it there. And you'll see it kind of just like springs back, right? So that's really cool. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know your complaints, your compliments, and just everything you'd like to see from the channel. And check out the courses. I, I really think that you guys can benefit from them. That's why I make them. And it does support the channel. Once I get enough income from these courses, I'll start putting up like more than one video a day. And uh, it'll be more involved content, okay? So by buying, by like me selling courses, it helps me provide even better content here on YouTube too, is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you next time.